ASML reported um, this week, Steve. The market didn't really like the report. I've uh, I've gone through the figures here and I've pulled out basically the, the sort of stuff that we pull out every time we do uh, ASML. And um, luckily, uh, Olivia slept quite well this evening, so I've been able to do the, the call as well. And uh, to be fair, I just read the transcript of the call, so I haven't actually listened to it. Uh, so hopefully I get some of the inflection uh, correct. But there are some interesting bits and pieces in it. And uh, we'll go through it. Uh, nevertheless, uh, so revenue came in, and these are in euros. Uh, everything's in euros. So 5.3 billion, which was down 22%. Gross profit came in at 2.7 billion, which was down 21%. Net income was uh, 1.2 billion, down 37%. And free cash flow was uh, an outflow of 676 million uh, euros. In terms of their business metrics, uh, they sold 70 units uh, in this quarter, so just like 72, and we would have been uh, we, we would have been flat year on year. But hey, uh, revenue by segment. So uh, net system sales was uh, 4 billion, which was a drop of 26%. Net services sales was 1.3 billion, which was a drop of 6%. In terms of the order book, they added 3.6 billion in net bookings. Uh, 63% of that is logic, 37% of it is memory. And uh, for non-EUV, uh, that was 3.6 billion. And net bookings at EUV was 656 million um, euros. Uh, that leaves you with a total backlog of 36 billion uh, euros. So essentially, uh, ASML have got nearly a year and a half's visibility there, uh, which is quite incredible considering uh, just in the last sort of three years, they've doubled their revenue. So uh, to still have that level of backlog is uh, is pretty impressive. So in terms of a guide, they said net sales would be about 5.9 uh, to 6.2 billion euros. Uh, they reckoned installed base management sales would be about 1.4 billion and the gross margin had come out somewhere around 50 to 51 percent. So uh, on to the call. Uh, they said that China is looking strong this year and China is adding capacity uh, because it's what the world needs uh, and they expect that uh, market share to uh, grow uh, in China and they have a higher need for self-sufficiency because they're essentially being cut off the higher the higher end products uh, they said to expect your first two nanometer product in 2025 uh, they're obviously seeing some really good progress with that and there's a, um, a quite a, a quick transition they think to uh, what, what's called GAA stands for gate all round so um I've I've done a bit of digging on this just to try and give you a really sort of succinct answer of what this is, but it's kind of like the next step in 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 um in semiconductor uh, semiconductor design, but it means that the gate wraps around uh, the channel on all four sides. Uh, if you imagine like a tube wraps around a wire, uh, and this allows better um, control of the flow of current. And so one of the issues we have with um, semiconductors at the moment, and we're talking about Moore's law here and keeping the, keeping it going, is the smaller and smaller we've made transistors, they get what what's known as like a current leakage problem. And having a full gate reduces this leakage and it enables basically us to make them smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, but they also can handle more current um when you when you go gate all round which should mean that we can have faster and more powerful chips and because we because we have less leakage uh going on you should also get more efficiency so we should be able to have faster um sort of more powerful chips um but you know with using less power consumption so um in case battery tech doesn't move on at the same speed of course so um hopefully that helps you understand why you know that's quite an important like step um, so they said that they ended Q1 uh, with negative free cash flow, and they said this was primarily driven by a lower down payments uh, received, but also a higher inventory uh, relative to the last quarter. And the higher inventory is a result of increased material intake, um, including high NA, uh, and this is as part of a planned capacity ramp in preparation for 2025, which if you remember the last time we covered this, um, they've and remember, they've got visibility into this year uh, because of the backlog. They think it's going to be um, the the terms they didn't use, but the terms I'll use a stonker. 
Um, so, yes, so it means that they're going to build inventory and they're going to continue to build inventory uh, just to prepare uh, in advance uh, and obviously because the lead times are so long. Uh, they ship the first high NA um, uh, EUV to a customer. Uh, that's under installation. The second one has shipped as well now and installation on that is starting. Uh, they were keen to remind everybody that the backlog is at 36 billion euros with 13 billion of orders in the last six months. And they said to just just to remind you that orders and ASML, it's not going to be linear. It's a lumpy and zigzag style. Um, but if you imagine it growing uh, from one end to the other uh, and to to expect that essentially. Um, on 2025 they said that it's going to be a very strong year and it's backed by a very strong backlog they think there's strong secular trends uh, and they're in the middle um, will be in the middle of a cyclical upturn in 2025 and there's obviously all of those grant money flying around for new fabs in America Uh, I think there's about 20 odd billion of of money gone out to Samsung, TSMC and Intel now and uh, they were very keen to remind you that uh, ASML, uh, uh, when it comes to EUVs, are the only supplier, uh, and that's why they're confident that orders will come. They, they said it quite funny. Uh, I've, I'll pull this exact quote out, but it said, um, so I think this is what we've seen before, and we've seen it again. But again, as Roger said earlier, if you believe 2025, and you know that if you want to buy an EUV tool, there's really only one phone number that you can dial. And uh, yeah, I think that is kind of the case. So... Um, 2024, they said, is already fully booked. They're just shipping what is booked. Uh, 2024 is going to turn out as per the guide. Um, there's really nothing else they can do about that. Uh, they said that they're in the habit of shipping what is booked. Uh, so there's little doubt in their mind that 2024 will turn out just the way they gave you um, as Outlook. So that was the ASML call. Stock was down quite a bit on the week, Steve. I think like 7 or 8% off the top of my head. Um, I don't really see anything here i mean just to say i read out a lot of minus numbers here all of it was bang on guide really uh in terms of revenue income uh and everything else so for the market to take it badly um seemed a strange one to me any thoughts yeah it's a slightly um odd thing to be uh, kind of looking at i get that those numbers were um down and the thing that sort of initially stuck out to me was the negative free cash um number but with a company like asml i mean you know it's not the case that suddenly they've found a way to sell things for less than their money or something like that right it's uh i wondered whether it might have something to do with timing of paying suppliers or anything like this was my kind of initial um guess and sort of so it's an inventory build uh basically and storing inventory can be expensive but they're guiding things you said 50 to 51 percent um gross margins which is roughly where they are at the moment with 2.7 on 5.3 so it's just over a half um it doesn't sound like a big inventory build is going to be an issue we'll, we'll get onto inventories in a little bit uh and things that really are um problems with that kind of thing uh but yeah so booked revenue is um kind of low but kind of expected and as has always been the case about this thing i think uh, they've got plenty to be getting on with while they figure out how to um drive sales again uh or, or whatever else it is they're sort of planning on doing as you point out that's um they are roughly limited by the size of their market and i get everyone's limited by the size of their market but that is their kind of main uh limitation um they put it in terms of being the only number that they can call they don't have competitors to kind of worry about here what they have to worry about is staying in front um the stuff on uh gate all round is kind of lost on it is kind of emblematic of what you want to see from a um in a broad semiconductor uh company i know it's not strictly um chip design and so on it's machinery but um what you want to be seeing here is companies innovating and continuing to innovate because this strikes me as a space where you can get a really big but you can also lose a really big lead um i'm not sure how easily asml could do that which is one of the reasons i'm not um bought this just yet i'm not entirely certain as to how far that lead um will stick around but um they are clearly working hard to to stay in front which is what you have to do uh in this kind of area because uh if you're if you're not moving forward you die in this sort of sector so yeah interesting that they were kind of bang on guide that's usually a sign of good management to be honest understanding that there's um uh, cyclicality to this stuff because uh, you know semiconductors are cyclical don't care what anyone says or has said before they do everything but not the kind of stuff that asml is making equipment to produce doesn't so 
uh, in general, what you want from a cyclical company is your management to be able to foresee that uh, and have a good feel for where they are and what's coming down the, the line. And if they're coming in in line with management guidance, that's um, that's just the way things are, uh, I think. So so I also didn't see anything here to really worry about keep working their way through that backlog. Um, and doesn't get too expensive when it comes to uh, storing things. So I think probably buying in ahead of an anticipated big ramp I would take them seriously uh, on that because they successfully called the kind of downturn for the time being. Um, that's, I guess, the the main thought I have here, that this is kind of pretty well run here and I'm impressed at management calling this correctly. It's it's hard to be wrong, isn't it, when you've got so... Like, your lead times are so long because essentially you know how long your machines take to make, you know how long they take to install, and if you've got 18 months' worth of backlog, you can kind of know what you're going to ship between now and 12 months' time, so it must make forecasting um, a lot easier than, you know, than, than say, a SaaS company or something like that um, for, for, for ASML. But one of the other things I think people are kind of missing is that last quarter was a record uh, in net bookings per quarter. They, threw out, they brought in 9.2 billion in bookings and just to compare it to the quarter before that or the quarter before that, it was 4.5 billion, 2.6. 9.2 and then 3.6 mm. so what i think we had was you know some some excitement in the uh, in the bookings for q4 um uh, in full year 23 and uh, this is back to a somewhat of a normalization so yeah we're in a cyclical downtrend uh, uh they think this is quite short-lived they think by the end of this year we'll be going back into uh, the, the sort of like mega books for ASML and remember at the end of last year they told you this year was going to be a flat year for everything um, you know not to expect much growth and the growth was to come in 2025 and when a company's got 18 months of visu- uh, visibility um, you, you you shouldn't be shocked by anything that they bring out um, in terms of the dividend Steve because I know you want to know that um, they said that they're going to bring the dividend up to um, 6 euros 10 per share uh, which is about a 5.2% increase over last year. Um, so there's been uh, three uh, payments of €1.45, Euro so you're going to get a, a €1.75 Euro payment to round you off. And uh, just to uh, let you know as well, the real buyback still going on at the moment. ASML purchased about 400 million euros uh, worth of uh, worth of shares in the quarter. Uh, they buy these pretty indiscriminately uh, throughout the year, um, regardless of price. Um, and uh, yeah, that 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 continues. Um, so yeah, a little bit of capital return, and uh, I didn't really see anything here to be particularly worried about, to be honest. No, uh, I was trying to work out what that dividend yield was. It's sort of about three quarters of a percent, uh, if I'm. I'm right there. And then when you said uh, uh, five, I was like, it's never a 5% yield on ASML. You were going to 5% increase, uh, which is where you're going on that. Um, yeah, that plus share buybacks makes uh, makes this worth looking at, um, I think. as sort of not just a, a growth story. It's a company with kind of genuinely excess cash because they are currently investing hard into their R&D on top of it. That could be quite a powerful combination. You've been watching a segment from the Playing FTSE show, brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading212. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out on the link in description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.